Yeah, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please take over. Thank you so much. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. My Bhagavatam, first canto, one chapter. Passing away of death by the Bhishma Dev, chapter 28. Samatya Kama Moksham Chaha. Sahupayam Yatam Mune. Nana Kyat Motu Asosu Varnayam Asatat Vazit Translation Then he described the occupational duty of different orders and status of life, citing instances from history, but he was himself well acquainted with the truth. Report incidents mentioned in the Vedic literature, such as Puranas, Mahabharat, and Ramayan, are factual historic narrations that took place sometime in the past, although not in any chronological order. Such historical facts being instructive for ordinary men were sorted without chronological reference. Besides that, they happen on different planets, nay, in different universes. And thus, the description of the narrations is sometimes measured by three dimensions. We are simply concerned with the instructive lessons of such incidents, even though they are not in order by our limited range of understanding. Each way Dave describes such narrations before Mahalaj Judas here in reply to his different questions. Next verse. Dharmam Pavadaras Tasya Sakala Pati Yu Pastitaha Yo Yo Go Yo Yo Minas Chenda Mikyur Vanchitas Pitarayanaha. While Vishnu was describing occupational duties, the sun, of course, ran into the northern hemisphere. This period is desired by mystics who die at the diet of yoga. The perfect yogis and mystics can leave the body at their own will, sweet will, at a suitable time and go to a suitable plan as desired by them. In the Bhagavad Gita 8.24, it is said that self-healing souls who have exactly identified themselves with the interests of the Supreme Lord can generally leave the material body during the time of the fire god's effulgence and when the sun is in the northern horizon, and thus achieve the transcendental sky. In the Vedas, these times are considered auspicious for quitting the body, and they are taken advantage by the expert mystic who have perfected the system. Perfection of yoga means attainment of such supermental states as to be able to leave the material body as desired. Yogis can also reach any planet within no time without a material vehicle. Yogis can reach the highest planetary system within a very short time. This is impossible for the material. Even attempting to reach the highest planet would take millions of years at a speed of millions of miles per hour. This is a different science, and these men knew how well how to utilize it. He was just waiting for a suitable moment to quit his material body, and the golden opportunity arrived when he was instructing his noble grandsons to ponder it. He thus prepared himself to quit his body before the exalted Lord Krishna, the Pandavas, and the great sages headed by Bhagavan, Yas, etc., or the Sahaja and the Gyan, Kimaranda, Sya, Kimaranda, Salakaya, Chaksu, and the Vitam, Ramana. That's my Sri Guru Maha. 
Sri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stati Tanguan Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadam Nayam Vibhati Svayam Vibhati Tan. Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedam Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedam Namaste Sarasvati Bhutale Hey Dhoidavani Pacharimo Nirva Sesa Sunya Vadi Pasquatti <laughs> Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama. Next verse. Leave it there. Don't jump around like a monkey. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mm -hmm. So, it's yogis, transcendentalists, who have perfected the yoga system. And that is easy, that also is included in bhakti yoga. And also leave their body according to their own will. And there is an auspicious time for leaving the body. Of course, for devotees, they don't consider these things. They they simply serve the Supreme Lord, and when Krishna wants to take them, then they are ready to go. They want to stay in this material world as long as they can to engage in devotional service and reach as many conditioned souls as possible with this transcendental message. And therefore, they're aligned with the message of the Lord. Krishna Dave has some service to do. And he stayed in his uh, position for more than 18 days, instructing the Pandavas, particularly in the state Maharaj. And he was surrounded by Krishna and many great sages, such as the Asa, but he was coming out of many of those even Sukadeva Goswami was there. There were many great sages and saints who had come to see this great personality at the last part of his life. And he was instructing the Pandavas in the science of ruling the world and also giving them confidence that this is the desire of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, uh, and this is a science, as Prabhupada said, it's not known by the materialists, it's impossible for them because they are so attached to their body. Mm -hmm. Many of them, and most of them don't even know this is different than their body. And when they think their body ends, everything ends. Or they have no understanding of what's happening after death. And so they don't concern themselves with that. And therefore they just live for the, for the activities of the body and the activities of the material sense gratification. Therefore they live a very pitiful life because this body itself cannot bring any happiness. Body is not a source of happiness because the body is not alive, the body is dead. The body is given to us at the time of birth when the soul enters into the womb of the mother and fertilizes the embryo. And then the embryo starts to grow and the living entity within the womb starts to develop and that is life. That soul will stay in that body until it appears in the in physical form, 
at school first, and then lived for so many years in that body. But the body is not life, neither at the time of birth nor during the time when the soul is in the body and acting within the body. For any time, the body is simply material. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego make up, as Krishna said, my external material energy. So these are energies of the Lord, but they have no life in and of themselves. Or even combining each one of them in different ways can never bring you life. The foolish uh, scientists think that life appears at a certain level of material development, and then life appears. So their conclusion as material development reaches a certain stage, life begins. And at one point, it deteriorates and life ends. But these, neither of these are these theories have any recognition for, for with those who are actually intelligent. They know <clears throat> that we are given a body to use, just like we are given a car to get around in. We go from place to place in the car. We get in the car, we use it. We get out of the car, we stop using it. And we get in this body and we use it for some time. And then, according to our consciousness at the time of death, when the body is no longer functionable, the soul leaves and goes on to another destination. And the body gradually disintegrates back into its original elements, earth, water, fire, air. And the combination of the different elements breaks down into the individual elements again, and ultimately it disappears. The body is not so important. <laughs> it's important only because we're in it. We have to use it. And it, has a, it becomes a vehicle for the practice of self-realization. And therefore, we give it care and some credit but the body can't give you happiness, nor can it fulfill your desires for happiness. The body can't do anything but simply give you trouble. That's all it's meant for. It. And somehow, however, if we get a good body where it's not so, we're not able to, we're able to move around in life with not too many difficulties. And we have developed some intelligence because and somehow having a good body. We think life is nice, and if we get a bad body with so many ailments, or it's ugly, and it's, uh, it's not able to do so many things, we think life is not so good. But life has nothing to do with the body at all. <laughs> it simply exists within the material body, and it moves from place to place according to its destination based on its activities in that particular body. And so those who are yogis, they know that the perfection of life is to uh, take control of the mind and senses and develop the yoga system where they can direct their life into a certain destination at the time of death. So accomplished yogis can reach higher time planetary systems within a short time. And they can go at the speed of millions and millions of miles for millions of years and quickly release a, reach a planet within a few seconds. It's that fast for the yogis because the soul is not part of the material energy and it can traverse the material energy with unbelievable speed even if the speed is not even measurable. In one verse, I think we, we were discussing that for a pure devotee, when he leaves the body, 
he immediately enters into the spiritual world. There's no time duration that has been passed. The time for leaving and the time for arriving is simultaneously. And if you want to measure that in terms of distance, you can't because it, it's, it has no number. It's unlimitedly numberless, it's way beyond any number to reach go from the material world to the perfection of the spiritual existence, not simultaneously. But that's the power of the soul under the influence of Krishna's internal energy. So devotees and those who are intelligent don't give much importance to this body. They take care of the body because just like we take care of a car because it has some purpose. It gets us around and change the oil and keep it clean, give it gas when it needs it. And we uh, tune it up to make sure it keeps its running capacity. So in this life, we give our body sufficient amount of food, rest, and um, medical care when required, or even medical care as a preventative function. So we do all that. Hmm. Why? Because the body has some importance. It can take us to our destiny in the spiritual world. But ultimately, happiness is not dependent on the body. Happiness depends on the relationship of the soul in connection with the Supreme Soul, Krishna. So here we're seeing Bhishma Dev now is reaching his time where it's time for him to depart. And the sun goes in the northern meridian, starting at the solstice, which is around January 15th. It leaves the northern meridian and travels to the southern meridian around June 15th. And Traverses the southern meridian until it reaches again the northern meridian the next year at January 15th. So, this is a cycle of the sun. And yogis who are expert in developing, have developed yoga power, choose to die at will or leave their body at a certain time. And it's auspicious to leave during the northern meridian because it guarantees that the destination that they focus on, they will achieve. So what about devotee? Should a devotee choose when they wanna die? Generally devotees don't worry about that because they know that they are under the influence of the Daiti Prakriti, spiritual energy, and simply they leave it up to Krishna to take them when he thinks it's, they're ready to go. The devotee wants to live as long as they can so they can preach Krishna consciousness, but ready to leave their body at any time according to the will of Krishna. If Krishna wants to take them back to the spiritual world, they are eager to go. If Krishna wants them to stay and preach, that is their desire also. So they're detached from their own ideas. They simply want to please the Supreme Lord and spread Krishna consciousness and then ultimately leave at the time that Krishna arranges. But they are already back home simply by their pure devotion. So as they engage in pure devotional service, even though they're in the material world, they're not part of this material world. They're in their consciousness and the spiritual. But if we study carefully, we find that there are auspicious times for spiritualists to leave the planet, which guarantees them return to the spiritual world. One such time is a period of about two weeks 
right after Jagannath Rathayatra in Jagannath Puri. Um, there's a particular name for that time. And it says that anyone who departs, any devotee engaged in devotional service who departs the world during that time was guaranteed to go back home back to Godhead or attain spiritual, their spiritual destination. For the sake of example, we, we can use our dear Janaki Nath Prabhu. Janaki Nath Prabhu left the world on, seven, on the uh, July 17th, 2021, which was just in that two, year, two week period of time. The scriptures glorify anyone who can leave during that time as being supremely beneficial and attain to ultimate goal of life. Of course, one has to be engaged in devotional service. That's not for the non-devotees, for those engaged in devotional service. So when we heard that Janaki Nath Prabhu left that particular time, there was a great celebration for his departure, along with wishing him all well in his trip back home, back to Godhead. Because the goal of life is not to simply live a long life. The Bhagavatam says that the, the bellows of the blacksmiths, they breathe, but there's no life there. They may breathe for, for a long time, but still that doesn't indicate life. So breath is not an indication of, it, of a, a beneficial life. Just like nowadays, they somebody gets sick, they put them on these artificial machines to keep them alive. And the machines are doing all the work of the bodily functions, but the person's already dead. It's just that they're on this machine and it appears to be that they're still living because it keeps their bodily functions going. But the person is already gone. <laughs> and it's just some false joke. And you might say, well, it is keeping them alive for a while, but what is the use if there's if you live on a machine and all you can do is function according to the machine, there's no life there. All you do, all you are, is just connected to this false sense of living. So a devotee is not interested in all of these things. They're interested simply in going back home, back to Godhead, because that is the goal of life. So the, bell, the bellows of the blacksmith breathe. Uh, the trees in the redwood forest in California, some of them can leave up to between five and 7,000 years. But what is the value of such life for, for a human being if we leave 7,000 years if he's no better than the tree? <laughs> so duration of life is, no, is not the success of life. Lord Jesus Christ, he lived for 33 years. Sankaracharya lived for uh, 34 years. Uh, saint Teresa of Lisieux, a great Christian saint, she died at 23. And uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu lived 48 years. So longevity of life doesn't indicate success of life. What is success is Whatever time you are in this material body, perfect that, where when it's time to go home back to Godhead, then that will be your next destination. So that can be done in one minute, or it can never happen in millions of years, depending on one's desire and activities in Christian conscience. So we say, die before you die. That means die to all those things that are keeping you from, from dying. What is that in our attachments in this material world? But for devotee, Krishna will help them give up their attachments so at the time of death, they are ready to go back home. But if we still want to stay in this material world and somehow or other find happiness through the mind and senses connected with the sense of it, then uh, we have to die. We're not really, we're not really living, and we simply have to die when the body ends. But for a spiritualist, they don't die. They simply 
just like you're in one room in your house and you get up and you go into the next room. So you move from room to room. The rooms are still there, but you are changed seating position. So we leave one body and we go into another one, hopefully the spiritual body. So we are still there. We don't not exist. Krishna says, Nahanyate Sivive. For the soul, there is neither birth nor death, and having once been, does he ever cease to be? His unborn eternal primeval immovable is not slain when the body is slain. The soul is eternal. The question is, wherever you are, become Krishna conscious. Use whatever time is left to become Krishna conscious. That's why we say that the most precious thing that one has is time. We may have money, we may have some kind of a material arrangement to give us some kind of false sense of happiness. But these things are not success in life. What is valuable is the time is time. So we don't know how much time we have left in this body. We could go in any minute, or we may just may live for another 50 to 100 years, you never know. But that's not the concern. Those Use whatever time you have and perfect your life, go back home, back to Godhead. Don't waste time because wasting time means wasting something as the most valuable. Time is precious. Time goes in one direction. When you're born, you have so much time in this body. And each moment, the duration of life is being, is being diminished by the movement of the time. So each moment we're dying, so if we are 75 years old, we have already died 75 years. If we are 22 years old, we have already died 22 years. If we are three years old, we've already died three years of our allotted duration of life. So we have a certain allotted duration of life, and we don't know what that is, but that doesn't matter. All we know is that whatever time I have, let me use every moment to become Krishna conscious. In that way, we are we're actually planning for our successful future. Therefore, time is most precious, and time is actually Krishna in the form of moving the living entity from one situation to another. Time is the external energy of Krishna. It's also Krishna using himself to move people along. Srimad Bhagavatam gives a certain definition for time. It's like there's a herdsman and he has many, many animals in his herd. So he takes his herd and puts them in one particular pasture. And the animals chew up the pasture and the pasture is no longer needed because there's nothing to eat. So he takes their, his herd and moves it to the next pasture. So time is like a herdsman moving the living entities from one situation to another. So there was this nice story where Prabhupada talked about this one, Lomasa. Lomasa Muni. He was a very uh, powerful sage. He, uh, he had a duration of life. For every hair he had on his body, he could live one life of Brahma. And Prabhupada said he was a very hairy sage. So his duration of life was incalculable. But he, had, but he was detached from anything material. He simply lived on the banks of a holy river and did his bhajan there. He had a group of followers. So one time they said to him, Guru Maharaj, can we build you a place for livelihood, a cottage, some place you can live? He immediately rejected and said, don't bother, I'm not going to be here very long. So what he was saying is that even though one may live a long series of years, but who's living long anymore? In such a yuga, 
if you perfected the yoga system, you could live up to 100,000 years. Dalmiki Muni, the author of Ramayan, was living in Satya Yuga, and he meditated for 60,000 years. You can imagine living 60,000 years in one body, but he lived up to 100,000. And as the yugas went on, the duration of life for the living being, for the human being, was diminished. In Shaita Yuga, people lived 10,000 years. You read about stories in the Bible where some of the biblical characters lived 500, 700 years. And Jonah, Jonah's ark, Jonah built an ark, throwing a devastation, and he put all the animals on the ark to save them from the devastation. And Jonah lived 700 and some years. So we lived in a different age. And in this age, this is Kali Yuga, memory, mercifulness, bodily strength and duration of life is, is diminished simply by the age. And if a person can live 80 or 90 years, they consider themselves to be successfully living a long life, but that's nothing. <laughs> 80 or 90 years, it's just, a, you can't even measure it in, in times of eternal times. It's so small. And nowadays, people don't even live that long. People die at 60, 50, and because of the age is so, so full of different difficulties, people are dying. 20s, 30s, 40s, people are dead. being born with various types of ailments and will even die really young. If somebody lives 80 or 90 years, they think, oh, we had such a long life. But it's actually quite short in comparison to other ages. Even in this age, we have Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, Advaita Charya. Advaita Charya lived 153 years. And Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, he lived 147 years. So these are persons in our recent history. But even that was insignificant. The point is, don't count on a long life in order to plan how you live. Live for each moment in Krishna consciousness. And then when death comes, you can immediately utilize the opportunity and go back home, back to Godhead. So therefore we say, die before you die. Die to those things that cause you to die. Because the soul does not die. The body dies, or the body apparently ends, which we call death, another way of saying the ending of the body. It simply means that the soul can no longer live in that particular body, and so it's time for it to move on, and that is called death. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's done by the destruction of the body, and sometimes it's done under the will of the Supreme Lord. To the materialists, they simply struggle I was seeing one person today on one video. He had a very young and exuberant life. And at 36 years old, he felt sick. He couldn't do anything anymore. And he was lamenting that his whole life is ruined because everything he lived for was now taken away. He was only 36. And for the first 36 years of his life, he had so much success. He was strong. He was uh, a very athletic. He had done so many things in his life. Now everything was gone. And he was very heartbroken now that his life was practically destroyed by this disease he, he came upon. So, of course, we see how the materialists, they suffer because they, debate, they base everything on the body. We base everything on Krishna. If Krishna wants us to stay, we stay. If Krishna wants us to leave, then we comply with Krishna and have faith that wherever he takes us will be a better destination than what we have now. 
and hopefully back home, back home, back to day. I'm born to turn running nights in my baby surgeon. One who remembers me at the time of death, Yum Yum Rafi Sparam Bhavam Tatva Ante Kaleva, Tam Tami Vaiti Kaunte Asadaka Bhava Bhavitaha. One who remembers me at the time of death, and that sort of that destination they will achieve. In the ninth chapter, ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, it says those who worship the demigods go to the planet of the demigods. Those who worship ghosts and spirits take birth amongst our spirits. Those who worship the ancestors go to the ancestors. And those who worship me live with me. So a devotee fixes their mind on Krishna and devotion to Krishna and makes that their goal because in that way they live happily while they're still in this material body in the material world. And when they leave, they ultimately achieve the perfection of life. No more having to take another material body, no more having to enter into the womb of a mother, which is as it's described in the Bhagavatam, is not a very pleasant situation to be packed up in a small little airtight bag for nine months. The child is always very suffering greatly in that situation. And then birth is not pleasant either for the mother or for the baby, very painful. Living within this material world, there are so many problems. The devotee doesn't want to come back here, even in a good material situation, because they know that the good material situation simply means a chance to forget Krishna. That's all. So a devotee wants to use every bit of time, preach Krishna consciousness, to serve the Lord in different ways, and simply depend on the mission of the Lord. Of the Lord. Says, now, you're ready. Come back to me. The devotee accepts that as a success in life. So a devotee is every bit Daivi Prakriti, the spiritual energy. Therefore, they are under the care of Krishna. The cat carries the kitten in his mouth. The cat carries the rat in his mouth. For the, for the, for the rat, the cat is death. For the kitten, the cat is mother. So Krishna, for Krishna, for the materialists, Krishna is simply the end of all of their schemes to be happy in this material world. And for a devotee, it's the uh, success of life to again return to the spiritual world and to serve Krishna in the pure spiritual atmosphere. So, yeah. So, great souls, they don't waste time trying to make bigger material arrangements to be happy here. They will simply prepare themselves to go back home, back to Gotham, and, and perfect their lives in that way. Okay, all right, Krishna. Yeah, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, thank you so much for this uh, very nice class uh, and uh, reminding us this uh, material body is temporary and after it reaches a certain stage, it deteriorates. So we should not worry about so much about this body. Soul is eternal. So we have to engage our time in uh, um, uh, Krishna consciousness and distributing this mercy to the fallen souls. And uh, as you said, time is so precious. Time is Krishna. So engage each minute. Uh, you know, to become Krishna conscious and self-realized and uh, reach out to the fallen souls and help uh, them to become Krishna conscious. Yeah. We so we not be afraid of death. We should be afraid of wasting time. Yes, Guru Maharaj. That's a very striking point to me. Yeah. And also I like the point which you said, uh, good material situation means, uh, you know, uh, engaging yourself and uh, in Krishna consciousness because we always think, Good material situation means like, oh, we are like, you know, settled here, but that's not the real material situation. That material situation means how much you are engaged 
in Krishna conscious activities. Yeah, that's a very nice point, striking point to me. Yeah, I'll open up the questions. Thank you so much, Gurmash, for this very nice class. Um, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, I already see the question. Um, please, uh, you can unmute, you can type in the chat box, or you can raise your hand for any Guru questions, Shabha comments, Shabha or realizations. Yes, Prabhu. Yes, Gurmash, I see that. Yes, Prabhuji, please go. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, dear devotees. You hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, uh, we are just having a message here. Uh, for Krishna's many devotees are here gathered in Anna Paras Park. And we actually uh, would like to see if you can address us maybe with, uh, with your presence. Uh, it's, uh, uh, your voice is breaking a little bit, Hare Krishna. Sorry, your voice is breaking a little bit. Uh, Guru Maharaj can't hear it. So, uh, can uh, so can uh, would you like to do it like to do it in the end after the questions? Maybe oh. press us after okay. the questions. Uh, so, uh, you like to do you like to turn off your camera and Prabhuji and uh, just uh, convey your message? Yeah. Yes. So you can be better. Yeah, it's a little better. Yeah, you can better. Okay, yeah. I'm just saying that uh, if a Maharaj would like to address us just after the question and answer, just in the end of the class, uh, we would really like to be eager to, for this mercy. Okay. So good much. What did you say? Uh, like after the end of the class, um, I think Prabhuji would like to do some Vyasa Puja celebrations. Is that? No, 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 no. Forget that. Oh. This is not this is not the time of that. This is for philosophy. This is for discussion. Okay. Thank you very much. But anyway, uh, we are uh, thank you very much, Maharaj. We are eager to uh, hear more from you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. So your devotees, uh, any questions, comments, or realizations? Uh, Prem Kishori. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. August to Prabhupada, August to you. Well, yeah, I wanna, yeah, I wanna, I'm going to call you on the phone after the class. I need to speak with you. Yes, Guru Maharaj. You have a question, though? Ask a question. You always got questions. <laughs> well, I don't know if it is the right question, but uh, your class was very uh, absorbing. Uh, but as a uh, as a person who works mainly with the body, uh, like all day long with small children, uh, this instruction, I have to remind myself forcibly that it's not the body, it's the soul, which is more important. So, um, for for example, yesterday I, have, I had a 12-month-old girl, baby girl, who was, who was going in coma. She was becoming encephalopathic. Um, but I, it was difficult. So, what should I do? I mean... I don't even know if it is the right question. So what should I do to keep reminding myself? Because if you see a small child who is almost like very, very sick and who can't even tell you what's wrong with the body, uh, I tend to forget this. And I'm not the body, I'm, uh, I'm soul. So why are you doing your, you know, when you're, when you're working on your car to make sure it runs good, you work, you work on the car. <laughs> So the body is the car, so that little baby car needs your full attention and care. And so that's your service, that's your occupation, that's your duty. You do that nicely, and you put your heart and soul into doing whatever you can to uh, give that person some care that will bring them back the health. But at the same time, in the back of your mind, you know that it's just the body you're working on. And if you can inject some spiritual principles that will allow you, both you and the person you're working on to somehow or other understand that um, it is by the will of God that one takes birth, it's by the will of God that one lives in this world, it's also by the will of God that one leaves this world so therefore, you can teach him that 
I'm giving you medicine. I'm giving you all the care it comes with my medical expertise. But ultimately, it's God that you have to pray to for help. If God wants to let you stay and cure you, he'll do that. If he doesn't, for whatever reason, first, then we can accept that also. So you teach people that, yes, I'm the doctor, but the real doctor is Krishna. <laughs> Thank you, Vimad. Thank you. Hi, Krishna. But do your best to try to save your patients. That's what you're that's what you're there for. So Krishna will work through you. But Prabhupada said, even with the best medical care, no one can guarantee uh, returning to health. And even without the best medical care, if that Krishna wants that person to live, he'll live. Yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. We don't know what Krishna will his will is, so we try our best. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I really appreciate. It. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Did you help that girl? Yes, she's still okay. <laughs> yes. Good, good, good. Yeah, so Krishna used you. You're his instrument. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. So, Guru Maharaj, just a follow up on that. Like, uh, when we hear, like, um, family or friend circle, uh, they are super sick. They are like uh, thing. It's very difficult uh, that time um, to be on that. Like we are not this body; we are the soul, and that's a natural thing. Like you know, we experience that lamentation. Um, so, how should uh, we understand that? Is it still like we are attached to the body, or it's like? Um... Well, so chamad so chamstram but say. When Arjuna was refusing to fight based on the enemy was his relatives, friends, family members, people who he loved, people who he grew up with, people who helped him in his life. He had to fight against them. He refused. And Krishna criticized him for being uh, a pundit, one who was not in knowledge. He said, you're giving up your duty based on some false sentiment. So, yeah, we have to do our duty. Our duty is to become Krishna conscious and leave the rest to Krishna. In the case of Arjun, Krishna wanted to use him to establish saintly rule in the world. Krishna could have did that without Arjun. And he also told Arjun, if you don't fight, it doesn't matter because all of these soldiers on this battlefield, they're not going on anyway. That's my will. <laughs> but we don't really know the will of Krishna, so we have to act according to the instructions given by our spiritual master and by Krishna. And then we simply depend on Krishna. And so so the lament for the state of the body means that one is um, not realizing that, uh, all right, so the body is, is having trouble, it's having difficulty. So we try to correct it. We try to keep it going so we can serve Krishna nicely. We shouldn't neglect, neglect the care of the body. But when we try so many things and the body is obviously being pulled away by circumstance, by Krishna, by material nature, or by whatever, then uh, what can we do? We simply have to surrender to the will of Krishna. Lamentation and is another side of hankering. These are the two principles of material life. We want something, 
And when we don't get get it, we lament that we didn't receive it. We want something and we get it. And then it doesn't give us the happiness we want, we, we expect it, and we also lament. We want something, we get it, it gives us some happiness, but then after some time it goes. So we get it. So these are all material things. So we should want only Krishna, and then we will not have to lament. Yeah, yes, good word. So that's it's a gradual uh, happens. Gradually, it progresses. We progress towards that. Like gradual, or don't use that as an excuse. Mm -hmm. It happen immediately, or it could take one hundred years. Depends on the intensity of your desire. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, yes, Mataji, uh, please go ahead. Namrata Mataji, see your hand raised. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Uh uh Guru Maharaj, I, uh, in uh, Bhagavad Gita, it is mentioned that uh, those who worship uh, Supreme God goes to those who worship supreme god goes to his adopt those who worship uh, demigods go to their planets those who worship ghosts and all uh, they uh, go to the planets of ghosts and those who worship ancestors they go there so uh, i i was just wondering i haven't heard about those people worshiping worshiping ancestors and um, what sort of people worship ancestors? Yeah, they worship their ancestors. There's, there's a planet called Pitri Loka. And those who worship the ancestors go there. It's a material planet called Pitri Loka. You can read about it. Krishna describes it in the Bhagavad Gita, Pitri Loka, the planet of the ancestors. So those who get so attached to their family members and they worship their family members throughout life, they go to where their family members are in their next life. So Krishna is saying is very clear. How you worship is how, or how you focus your life on is the desires you develop. And based on those desires, you act. And based on that activity, you get a certain result. So uh, even in the Bhagavatam, in the second canto, Krishna describes those who worship different deities and get particular benefits from the worship of those deities. Those who worship Uma, uh, the wife of Lord Shiva, uh, they uh, they get a good wife. Those who worship the uh, Prajapatis, they get good family members. Those who worship, uh, I forgot what they're called. Anyway, they get good good wealth. So, accordingly, the verses are in the Bhagavatam, second canto, I'm sure, I um, can't remember the verse, second canto, I think, second chapter or third chapter. But, and then Krishna says, a kamo sarva kamo vo moksha kamo varadi, he brain of bhakti yogena yajeta purusam. But um, that uh, it doesn't matter. Just worship me, and whether you're full of material desires, desiring liberation, or have no material desires, just worship me. That's it. So he's saying, even if you have material desires for all of these things, still worship me. And that way you'll come to me.
okay good much uh, so in in uh, some of the bhagavatam stories of uh, maybe yeah king prithu i think king prithu performed a yagna to uh, please uh, lord vishnu and uh, also to demigods it said that demigods uh, if we are uh, uh, performing yagna to uh, which is ultimately uh, the offering to the supreme lord then uh, why they were uh, uh, offering this yagna to the demigods he was doing both because he's a king he wants to give prosperity to the kingdom and so but he was worshiping the supreme personality of god at all But the demigods he was he was trying to please was Lord Brahma. Ultimately, Lord, Lord Vishnu appeared within the assembly, when later on Lord Brahma also appeared. But he was in his focus was on the supreme personality of Godhead because if you please Krishna, you please the demigods automatically. They're automatically pleased. So he included the devas in the worship, but ultimately he was he was worshiping the supreme personality of God. But those who worship the devas separately, then uh, they're called ritigyan, and their intelligence has been stolen by Maya. Maya B. Their intelligence has been stolen by Maya, not Guru Maharaj. I can't hear you. Mm -hmm. Their intelligence uh, have been stolen by Maya. Uh, I didn't get what you said. Is it? They, anyone who worships the demigod, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, they're less intelligent. Mm -hmm. Because whatever the demigods can bestow is actually coming from me, Krishna says. But if you worship Krishna, the demigods are automatically pleased. You don't have to please the demigods separately. Hare Krishna Mataji, is that okay? Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Dear devotees, um, any further questions, comments? Um, sure, you all have some at least realizations. Please go ahead. Yeah, Guru Maharaj, I don't see any questions, but I have a question. Can I ask Guru Maharaj? It's actually from, uh, uh, I took a note of that question. Keep it moving. Come on, don't. Don't sleep. <laughs> uh, no, I have a question, Guru Mara, so I'm just looking at the question. Um, yeah. So this they, question, they, all, they all meditate rather than speak. <laughs> Who's meditating? Your job is to keep speaking. <laughs> yes, Guru <Mara. laughs> So I don't see any questions, Guru Mara, so I have a question. Uh, this question is from... Uh, uh, Canto 1, uh, chapter 6, verse 28, uh, where like uh, Narada Muni, um, he left the transcendental, I mean, once he got purified, um, he left the body and um, he, his body got spiritualized. So I'm just trying to understand, I mean, my understanding is very low, but uh, uh, when a pure devotee, when death happens, so we should understand that uh, Krishna gives them death because he is completely spiritual, uh, is uh, purified. When Krishna does what? Uh, when uh, Krishna gives uh, death to a pure devotee, so based on this verse, um, should we understand that uh, 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 devotee is completely purified, is completely like detached from all material uh, things? So, should we understand like that? 
What is Krishna doing? What's the question? Uh, so my question is Guru Maharaj. In the translation it says, um, having been awarded a transcendental body, um, befitting an associate of the personality of God, I quit the body made of material elements and thus all acquired fluidity results of work stopped. So when we get purified, um, so Krishna will give the pure devotee death. I mean, uh, uh, um, or should we understand like that? Well, you have a transcendent body. That's you. It's just that body is, is within the material body right now. So as you, as you are practicing devotional service, you're diminishing the effects of your material body and you're awaking your transcendental body. When your transcendental body is fully awake, then your material body is, is gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can still be in the material body and we can still uh, continue the spiritual activities, even though like... Uh, well, that's what a pure devotee does. They're not part of the material world, although they look like they are. Okay. Devotional service is transcendental to everything material. So one who is fully engaged in devotional service, purified at heart, at once transcends the mode of material nature and reaches the spiritual platform. That can happen right in, in this body. The one who actually perfects their life in transcendental, and then they they lose it, the, the material body is gone, and they return to the spiritual world in their in their transcendental body or their real body. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, yeah. Because uh, I was a little bit confused because even in the one point. Uh, 27 verse also, Prabhupada, the purport, it mentioned when a pure devotee is ready, all of a sudden change of body occurs. Yeah. By the will of Krishna, all of a sudden you're out of your material body and you're in your spiritual body. Fully, fully, fully engaged in devotional service. And you're no longer part of the material world anymore. Either physically or otherwise. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Don't so, worry. Just keep saying Hare Krishna. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes, yes. It's a very, yeah, it's a very, yes, it's a very deep class for me. Uh, but uh, yeah, as you said, you know, I'll just focus on chanting so everything will line up. If you understand one thing, that you have a body, but you're not the body. Hmm. The body is a shadow of our existence. It's not real. Hmm. So absorbed in the body, then it seems impossible to understand that. So don't worry about understanding it. Just purifying yourself through devotional service. That's the channel of that right Mm -hmm. And your intelligence expands at the same time, your awareness of your existence starts to become complete. And you become joyful. When you're always happy constantly, then you're starting to begin to understand who you are. <laughs> So yes. not being happy all the time. That means we need to we need some work to do. <laughs> okay, so that's how we can judge ourselves. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. So devotees, any further question? Yeah. Sorry, Guru Maharaj. Please go ahead. Finish. Okay. Yeah. So devotees, any further questions or clarifications? Yeah, so Guru Maharaj, I don't see any questions. It's uh, one hour past uh, nine minutes. Um, so we can end the class here. Um, um, Hare Krishna. Yeah, thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Uh, Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. Anantakoti Vaishnava Ji Jai.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances and wish to Shri Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, I have contacted um, uh, Yugal Kishar Prabhu for tomorrow's class. Um, um, but he said he's traveling and uh, he said, Dhanadar Prabhu, Sham Keshav Prabhu, he'll going to contact you soon with the topic and all. And uh, I think the time is 8.15 a.m. Eastern time, um, as I remember the previous class. Um, but I'm not very sure about the timing, Guru Maharaj. Um, I'll just find out today and I'll post in the group, uh, Guru Maharaj, and I'll message you also. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I just wait for you. It's 8.15 8 15 Eastern Standard Time. And then what is that? It will be like uh, 5 45 p.m. Uh, IST, uh, 5 45 p.m. Uh, for India time, Guru Maharaj. Okay, that's where I am now. I'm in India. Yeah. So 5 45 is my time. But I'll confirm um, with Prabhu again and I'll let you. Yeah, make sure the devotees are aware of this. Yes, good morning. Yes, good morning. Thank you, good morning. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay. Yes. Who's in Yes, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much uh, again for this beautiful class. Um, uh, thank you for coming and enlightening us every day. Hare Krishna. Thank you for doing this. 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 Yeah, Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Where are you, Sri Devi? When are you coming back to Mayapur? Oh, uh, hopefully, Guru Maharaj, Monday morning I should be able to uh, come back. Tomorrow, Dad is getting discharged. I'm here in the Bhakti Vedanta Hospital, Mira Road, with him. Okay, take care of your father. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for your merciful blessings on him. <laughs> blessings come from God. <laughs> okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, devotees. Thank you so much. I'll end the class here. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you.